The 6.5 is on the road at Clutter Evolve 2023 in New York City. Dan, it's great to be back and hosting Evolve. Yeah, it's good to be here. We're, uh, we're looking over the Hudson, beautiful yeah. skyline view. Um, but we're here to talk about AI, That's right. data, and of course, Cloudera. Exactly, and it's, uh, it's amazing how much uh, AI and generative AI has really uh, taken over what we do as analysts, because quite frankly, enterprises need to know what to do, how to do it, uh, where should they start. But the important thing too is, is like we've seen in all of tech, it takes a village, right? It takes partnerships, it takes tech companies banding together to be able to serve those enterprises. And that's interestingly enough what we're uh, here to talk about right now. And I'd like to introduce uh, Priyank, how are you? Good I'm to up. see you. Thank you. Welcome to the 6.5, first time on there, but we've had a lot of uh, Cloudera folks on here and we're looking forward to understanding uh, what is going on here in the show. So thank you for coming on. Thank you for having me on and big yeah. fan of you guys. So Thank you, it's, appreciate it's always that. Great when even if they're first time that they've watched, you know, they're going to know what's going on. He's going to have, he's going to, he's going to be right in the flow. Maybe even need to take one of our seats one day. Priyank, <laughs> start thinking about that. But, uh, but listen, um, it's a big moment. Perhaps this last year has brought a, an inflection to something that actually is very much in the heritage of Cloudera. Cloudera has been helping companies get their data in order for a long time. Right. And before it was popular and before ChatGPT was a thing, Cloudera's been here working closely with enterprises, right. many of the biggest in every single industry. And in fact, right. I saw that slide this morning when Charles gave his presentation, yes. it was very good. But I want to talk about ecosystem. Yeah. Today, the company made a lot of commentary and focus and kind of its first wave of its new <laughs> ecosystem partners. That's Talk to me about kind of what's this ecosystem launch? Who are the partners? How was this all decided? You know, give us the skinny. Yeah, look, I'll start with what Pat said earlier, right? It takes a village, but it actually takes an ecosystem for yeah. customers to realize value from their data, right? And it's not new to us, you, you, you nailed it. We have always fostered big ecosystems around our platforms. Uh, this particular uh, day, this, this is exciting for us because it is the announcement of the first wave of our AI ecosystem partners, yeah. right? And I think the genesis of this is, it's quite simple, right? Anywhere we have gone and spoken to our customers uh, and, and you know, even, even, customer, even, even folks who have not used us for a while but they are thinking about using us, they've always said the data platform is the root of the AI platform. Right. And there's something in it that really sticks with me with that, which is whenever you start building any kind of AI strategy to make sense of chat GPD, right? Like think, thinking past chat GPD is about thinking how to leverage that technology in the enterprise or in the company. And in doing so, you have to start with the core, which is your data core. Right. right? And that's really the opportunity that uh, we have to add value to our customers. But we realize that doing everything with a single technology is not the right strategy right. for almost every customer out there. And that's, that's where the ecosystem comes into play and the evolving and emerging AI stack, right? And so some of the announcements, right. the inaugural partners that we announced today um, are essentially targeted to start out with that deep integration from the product side, which is why I'm talking to you about it, as well as making and making sure that there is multiple options that the customers have as they move fast on this journey. And fast is the key word over there. I'll come back to it. So Priyank, uh, both of our analyst firms uh, believe, and, and we have believed, whether it was uh, analytics-based AI, machine learning, deep learning, now generative AI, you have to have your data in order. And uh, it's good to see what you're doing now in this world of, of, of generative uh, AI uh, as, as well. And in fact, it, it's a, the challenge is exasperated because you know, the future of generative AI is not just doing domain specific magic tricks here. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's across domains yeah. uh, in areas that typically enterprises haven't, uh, haven't uh, merged data, right? right? Uh, so your first partner out the gate, unsurprisingly, and, and somebody you've done a lot of work with, <laughs> yeah. uh, is, is NVIDIA. Right. So uh, the question is, uh, what are you doing with them, yeah. and how is that different from yeah. what you were doing with them uh, before? Because I think I've seen them on your, on your slides yes. in previous years. Yes, 
So NVIDIA has been, a, as you said, a long-standing partner, and we have had integrations with GPUs or accelerated compute of NVIDIA for acceleration of our Spark-based workloads on-premise for a while. Right? With the with the, with the generative AI wave and the adoption that we're seeing across customers, what we are doing new now is to enable NVIDIA-powered accelerated compute yeah. across data engineering, machine learning, AI training, AI inference. The entire life cycle of the AI application is where we are powering with NVIDIA now, right? And that takes, right, sitting behind that headline, yeah. is the integrations that we have done with the GPUs and the, and the newer generation of GPU servers that uh, NVIDIA has brought to market as well, right? So that's what we are doing. Yeah, so that's absolutely a step up in, yeah, so going from Spark to basically what sounds like uh, uh, the entire AI like so. workflow. Yeah. Okay, how about this? I can't wait to get more information on it and the video and, and, and all that stuff, but it's great You know, stuff. It's, it's interesting too, Priyank, because NVIDIA has become a bit in vogue for every company. Yeah. And so what I'm hearing here though with really kind of full data pipeline, lifecycle, hardware to software integration yeah. is that the focus here is not for Cloudera to just be another, I mean, there's been a lot of arm waving. Yeah. Uh, mostly of Jensen in front of large rooms of people <laughs> from every tech company I on the right. planet. I think keynoted. Well, he's, he showed up on I think seven stages that you at events that you and I have been to yeah. in the last nine months. It was right. a very short period of time. Yeah. Right. And, and so, that's what I'm hearing, and, and, and obviously I think that's what customers want to hear is look, you know, it's not arm waving, it's not hand waving, it's fully exactly. thought out exactly. end to end yeah. integrations that help companies deal with this complex data ecosystem and take advantage of all the compute power that's yep. out there. Now, you also mentioned maybe a lesser known, and that's Pinecone. Yes. Now, now if you're a data scientist, you're very familiar, but if you're yeah. in the business side, you're probably not hearing much. Talk a little bit about that release and, and, and what that's about. Yeah, yeah. So. So you know, to put into perspective, right? There are there are three three theses that we have around our AI ecosystem. One is on the data side, we are going to we we, we understand that data powers the AI. Second is the models and the intelligence that's sitting out in the large language models, whether it's foundation models or open source. And the third one is to be able to enable it at the right price point in the in, in a hybrid form factor, wherever the customer wants to deploy right. it, right? And the third one is what we talked about first, which is with the NVIDIA, where, where, where us integrating the entire life cycle on NVIDIA makes it, makes it easy. Pinecone fits into the first thesis, which is if data is the one that is going to determine the outcome and impact of the applications that we are seeing, for yeah. example, code completion, chat doc summarization, or speech to text analysis, and, and you name it, we see we have uh, app, uh, production applications running on Cloudera, then it is important to provide quick access to cloud-based vector stores because vector store is a building yes. block of these applications. You can have the data stored in large scale systems like ours, but you do need to represent them as vectors before you can actually feed them into the models or the LLMs uh, to make anything useful out of it, right? That is the genesis behind our Pinecone app uh, integration, which we, what we did there is we took the Pinecone uh, APIs and we and we published a Cloudera machine learning AMP or an applied prototype that gives a blueprint for how to leverage Pinecone alongside Cloudera for any customer who wants to use it, right? And you can imagine, a lot of our customers are obviously uh, obviously looking for cloud first uh, options, which is really what Pinecone uh, offers alongside us. Yeah, and the, the amount of unstructured data too is where yes. vector databases come in uh, and add value, that could be images, those could be videos, yes. those could be anything that's the spoken word, yep. uh, like a uh, like a conversation yep. that, that you want to follow up and auto-magically create action items yep. uh, for, a lot of popularity there. I'd heard of Pinecone uh, previously, but not nearly as much uh, as I am now, and plus, my son came, he'd had an internship, and he was using Pinecone for his generative AI work that he was doing, so um, it, it yeah. It, is, it, is, it is the fast way to get started, right? Going back to fast, right? And, and you need to move quickly is what customers have been telling us because the, the space itself is evolving so fast, Pat, that if you start six months late, you might be six years behind because right. your competition may have moved fast enough in, in getting a sense of how to adopt this technology for, for the impact that it is generating. Does vectorizing data uh, in some way help secure the data? In this new in this new world here, 
if architected right. Okay. Right? When you actually store the vector representation of the unstructured data or text or, or the prompts, as we call it, into a vector database, you do need to make sure that you are architecting the authorization and the authentication around the vectors appropriately, right? So in our integration with Pinecone, for example, when you deploy the Pinecone, uh, uh, when you deploy our AMP, which is feeding data into the Pinecone uh, database, and then leveraging that on the other side for analytics, we are, the Cloudera side is integrated with SDX, which is our security and governance framework, and that's that's really, it's important when you build out the application to be within that framework so that you are, you can eventually trust that the data coming out or feeding your application is the right one, and thereby the the impact or the, or the results are right. The caveat of if if architected correctly is an interesting one. Yeah. It's not something an analyst would say. Oh, exactly, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. It's, so uh, your third partner that you announced at the event was Somewhat unsurprisingly, AWS, yes. right? Uh, number one market share uh, in IaaS yes. uh, out there right now. You know, the 800 pound uh, gorilla uh, uh, the for IaaS. Yeah. And uh, 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 Dr. Matt Wood actually uh, published a blog yes. outlining uh, what the two of you are doing together, which by the way, I think to analysts, right, when we see, you know, partners and partners putting effort in describing what they're doing, that's a true partnership. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I know that uh, AWS doesn't, you know, throw around blogs uh, just 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 for yeah. everybody. So, what are you doing with them, and what's new? What's different? Because you have CDP that operates uh, with with uh, AWS already. W yes. What is this new uh, yep. stage of your relationship? Yep, this is about Cloudera and AWS AI. Right? Okay. Dr. Matt Wood's blog outlines our joint strategy on AI. As, to, as, as it relates to Cloudera and the services in the AWS AI ecosystem. Of specific note from our side is, uh, we have a, we have a two-pronged strategy of how we enable AI or how we leverage AI. Number one is to build AI into Cloudera so that all our users, all our customers can leverage the benefits of large language models and Gen AI directly in the platform without ever needing to understand or know the technology. Right. The second, which is also of interest for us because we serve enterprises, is to make Cloudera the best platform to build AI applications with. In both of those, we are partnering with Amazon AI, particularly the Bedrock Serverless offering that just went GA a right. few weeks ago. Uh, and we've been working with them for much, much, uh, much longer prior to the service being generally available, and integrated that into our platform to provide our SQL AI assistant, right? So, in Cloudera, we have a, you know, we have a data warehouse service as part of our platform. With the SQL AI assistant integrated with Bedrock, now we can essentially make that service accessible to English language prompts, yeah. so that you don't need to know or write SQL to be able to leverage the uh, or the, the data or ask questions of the data within the Cloudera ecosystem. Right? So that's that's the concrete integration point. The other one is building applications, whether it's architectures like RAG or retrieval augmented generation, fine tuning, right. these patterns are the ones that we that we published CML amps on with Bedrock to make it easy for customers to leverage these as well. So this, I hope that makes, that, that makes sense. This is about the AI services within the Amazon ecosystem. Of course our partnership, as you noted, is long standing and broader than that. This one is particularly exciting because of the because of the opportunity that stands yeah. ahead of us. So what I'm seeing is strong partnerships with respectively the leaders in categories. You've got yeah. rapid development with Pinecone, you've got the absolute, you know, leader in hardware right now with NVIDIA, and then of course AWS has not only the largest IS deployment globally, but the most customers. Talk a little bit about kind of how this progresses. I mean for a company like Cloudera, is it about getting mindshare with the rest of, you know, I know Intel's a partner and, and AMD's a partner, so is it is it building everything out? Is it about, um, you know, being with all the different cloud providers? Is it, you know, moving to more of a vocal partnership with Google and, and with Microsoft? And, um, you know, is that kind of the approach? Is it to start with the, the leaders and move out? Or what are you, what are you thinking? What's but next here for the ecosystem? We, we optimized for the customer's viewpoint, right? to get started fast for the customer. Right. What is what is required for that? 
right? And it so happens that we that we started out going deep with Nvidia, Amazon, and Pinecone. That doesn't mean that 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 ends there. That's why it's the first right. wave, right? right? Something that we are super excited about is the other part that we're hearing is you have the access to the broadest range of foundation models with Amazon, with the, with the integration, yep. that's great. There is an even larger community of models sitting out in open source communities like Hug and Face, right? right? And so we are, we are hearing from customers who are already leveraging models on these communities and hubs directly on the Cloudera platform or, or, or using the Cloudera data to, to, uh, to fine tune those models. And there's something that we are super excited about to how to make that easier, right? It's, there's, there's a set of customers who have already figured it out and they are ahead on the journey, but there is, uh, there, there is a good chunk of customers who would, who would need it to be well packaged, well integrated before they move, and we are definitely here to, 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 uh, to solve that. And that's another example of where the ecosystem moves next, right. speaking specifically on the AI side. Priyank, yeah. I, I I have to say that you guys hit it. Uh, Hugging face, by the way, Pat was another kind of legend of 2023. Exactly. It's been <laughs> everywhere and anywhere out in front because yeah. it really was one of those that democratized the open yeah. source large language model. And it sounds like you've made some very smart early decisions in ecosystem. And of course, we'll be paying attention and providing you some input on maybe the the, the what the next wave should be because that's what we do. I'd, I'd love to but hear next year the progress and yeah, the new yeah. partners you've added. Absolutely. So Absolutely. thanks so much for joining us after all this time uh, being a being a viewer. We loved having you on the show. Yeah. Thank you, Dan. Thanks, Pat. Thank you. I appreciate it. Definitely. All right, everybody, you heard it here. We're at Cloudera Evolve 2023 in New York City. But for Patrick and myself, We've got to say goodbye. Subscribe and watch all the other episodes and all the other coverage here. We'll see you all soon.